Hi and welcome to another video by RURT Kids. So in this video I'm going to be looking at the work of Jim Dine and specifically his tool work which gets replicated throughout his career really. Um, and I think that's primarily because I think he's got a bit of a background with his parents and I think they owned a, owned a hardware store and also his interest in how you know everyday objects like these sort of uh, you know pliers, pincers are uh, you know designed by somebody you know and they have a sort of functional element to them but there's an aesthetic to them as well there's an honesty to these sort of tools so I think it's something that he was quite interested in for for quite a long part of his career and if you look at the work of Jim Dine you'll see he does some gorgeous uh, draftsman style pencil rendering of various tools uh, also some etching print lithographics work as well so I'm just going to show you some really simple experiments just to sort of copy that sort of Jim Dine style so I've just got a pair of uh, pair of pliers or pincers not quite sure what the right word is for for those uh, and what I did earlier on is I put them on paper just get a standard HB pencil and just traced lightly around the outside trying to capture all the inside detail and then what I did is I cut them out the piece of paper with a pair of scissors so now I have got the positive here so I was left also with a hole in the piece of paper where the negative was so I could use the negative to do some rubbing inside but I'm going to use the positive now so these have been taken from that and I've just put some blue tack on the back just little pieces don't want to raise it up too much so I've got little pieces of blue tack and I'm just going to blue tack that lightly onto my paper just flatten that out there we go and then I've just got a variety of pencils out my drawer I've got 4B uh, HB uh, I've also got one of these uh, which is a blending stick uh, which is just a stick you can buy quite cheaply now in packs and these are compressed rice paper and these are a little bit like a fancy way of smudging with your finger they were, uh, get really nice smooth textures with these and also I've just picked up one of these really nice graphite 2B stumps as well so what we're going to do is going to try and create an outline so we almost end up with a negative of the tool in there so what I need to try and make sure I, when I'm working on this is that I don't go underneath because I want a nice crisp edge and then we're going to eventually take these away so let's just do some experimentation and just see what we can uh, what we can do so I'm just going to see what what these do here so Gonna wherever I'm working with my pencil or my stick, I'm just gonna hold the paper down so I do get quite a, a crisp edge. To my tracing. start off with that section and turn it around so and get quite close to that element there so I'm just going to use this blending stick now if you zoom in a bit there we go so I want it to be quite sort of grungy like a print would be Too neat. So you could just use your finger if you don't have one of these. Once the blending stick starts to pick up, obviously, tone from your rub, you can actually just start to draw with the blending stick as well, really. So you could leave, I mean, what I might do is think I'm going to work back into this to make it a little bit more scratchy My intention is to do a series of work um, So some realistic drawings, some realistic 
realistic drawings in pencil. Uh, also going to do a movement one a little bit, almost like Duchamp's uh, new distending a uh, staircase. So where we get a series of tools, a little bit like his, uh, if you Google the one he did of a saw, uh, you get this almost like different viewpoints from within the object. As I said, there's a certain honesty about tools. You know, we don't think about them as aesthetically interesting or beautiful, but you know, it's man-made objects. So you know that they, somebody has designed. So if we think about, obviously, Jim Dine as being one of the major pop artists, you know, might not classify himself as that, but you know, we put him in there along with Rochenberg, Warhol, Lichtenstein, Robert Indiana, Klaus Oldenburg, Rosenquist, all those other great artists who at that time turned the art world onto looking at everyday life, everyday popular culture, iconic objects, symbols, logos, packaging, and you know, you could do this with anything, kitchen utensils, anything that in some ways you just take for granted. You might work with a harder, harder pencil now maybe, just to emphasize some of the elements within this, just zoom out a little bit, there we go just to pick out some of the hardness of some of these edges. And then what we'll do, we'll do a bit of an unveil. And we have this positive, negative almost. And then what we could do is just get, a, get a better pencil. So I've just picked up a couple of different pencils. Uh, these are actually different pliers that are used for the tracing. I realized I'd left those somewhere. So slightly different, but what I'm gonna do is I think just, just, Just pick out some internal detail, I think. Don't want to do too much overwork drawing. I'm just going to stop there because so there's that danger of overworking it. So that's my stencil positive negative Jim Dine first little video on that one. And then I'm just going to make a stop there and then I'm going to do a multiple version as well. Thanks for watching. Okay, in this next part of the video, so we've just done part one, got this single piece. Our next part again is we are going to maybe do a series. So using the same template, and what we're going to use is some charcoal, if I can find it. Some compressed
pressed charcoal. In this video, I'm just going to work in So on the first one, what I'm going to do, tracing around all of the pliers, just making sure when I rub, try and get the stencil pressed down, pushing that charcoal to give me a nice clean line edge. out. Do you want to almost create a haze on this? As long as you get this template nice and tight against the paper. Okay, so we're going to peel that off carefully because we're going to reuse this. There we go, get this sort of Jim Dine-esque haze. So I was thinking it might be like rotating it across so, see how that fell. That's what we're going to go with. Okay, so this one, I'm not going to do all the way around. I think I might just... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just so I've decided not to take the face this time. Push that out. So I'm working on the inside of the tool and this left hand side here. So let's just pull that off, see what that looks like. Okay, so it's losing a little bit. And I might just try and keep the fall quite natural. Um, okay, I might just work on this left hand side now. Don't think I'm going to go inside, so I might just start like that. Right, let's see. So it's almost like you're rubbing a burnishing. I don't want, I don't want a line. I want this just tone, and it sort of creates a bit of form, really. Now, mono printing would be a really nice technique for this grunge you find. Um, so, I think we're going to do a separate video on mono printing tools. Or, what you could do is do is photocopy, you know, stick this on a photocopier, photocopy and draw from in black and white, which is always really nice as well. Just putting the, the essence of that stick there. I just want a little bit of ghosting just by what's on. On my finger, just picking that out. Don't want much. Let's see what that looks like. 
blue tack there. Yeah, that's quite nice. Just by using what was left on my finger, just to get the ghosting. I might, I think I might just do one more. Don't have to do that. Or you know, just get it falling quite naturally over, I think. Let's do that. Bit of overlap there. Okay. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to see what's left on my finger and what's left on the outside of the template. And I'm just going to ghost edge it. So it's going to be very subtle, on, which I really like actually on that. Now I'm going to cramp my finger. on these edges. Probably use the maybe the blending stick but just don't want it to be too heavy. I feel heat from rubbing through my fingers. This is probably not good. Struggle to get these ends without ripping them off. Not much left on my finger. Let's see what that looks like. Have a peel off. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. <sighs> Give a little bit of a blow. Cool. So we've got almost like this, as I say, Marcel Duchamp new descending staircase. You know, so we've got this like disappearing tool going from sort of quite a positive element. Just you know, rub some of these out. I don't like it where it stops really intense. I like it to bleed out. I like these are nice with these overlaps, and and that's even really nice as well, which is just the blue tack on the back. It's almost like it looks like a rivet, you know, and you and you know you end up with quite a nice piece of artwork just from the actual template, you know, where you've pressed and rubbed and. You know, really almost like subtle ghost drawing as well, which is lovely. So that's my, my second piece of Jim Dine-esque work. The same I'm going to do. So that was my first, just working around and then just scratchifying in. And then I'm going to do a mono print one for the next piece. So if you enjoyed that, like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.